Hey there, I'm Norm from Cardboard Conjecture, and this is Show and Tell, an overview and review of Ginkopolis in 15 minutes, where my goal is to show you what the game's about and tell you what I think. Welcome, I'm Norm, and this is Ginkopolis, and let's get this thing going. 2212, Ginkgo Biloba, the oldest and strongest tree in the world, has become the symbol of a new method for building cities in symbiosis with nature. Humans have exhausted the resources that the earth offered them, and humanity must now develop cities that maintain a delicate balance between resource production and consumption. Habitable space is scarce, and mankind must now face the challenge of building ever upwards. To develop this new city type, uh, you will gather a team of experts around you and try to become the best urban planner for Ginkopolis. So, here we are. Here's the board. Here's the components that you get with the game, and we'll get into that a little later. But uh, this is what you see. So, in Ginkopolis, the city tiles come in three colors. Yellow, which provides victory points. Blue, which provides tiles and red, which provides resources. Um, uh, some of these tiles start in play and they're surrounded by letter markers that show where new tiles can be placed. So, in Ginkopolis, let's go through, uh, first of all, the game mechanisms that are used in this game. There is um, area majority in the center area here, area majority, area influence, and uh, it's very, organic in nature and how it move and how the city develops and later on in the uh, in the opinions I'll get into that in more detail uh, layering this is a, a very clever aspect of this game the layering aspect is uh, you get to build vertically and uh, I haven't seen that too many times but again um, uh, you know it's very cleverly used in this game uh, open drafting uh, this game well I, when I get into what you do on your turn I'll explain the drafting part but tiles are drafted and cards are drafted. Uh, and then, of course, we have simultaneous action selection where everybody uh, chooses uh, behind their screen what they're going to do, places in front of them, and then on their turn, everybody reveals. So interesting because of the gambling, push your luck, pre predictive nature of who's playing at the game. And, of course, tile placement where you choose to uh, build these neighborhoods because these neighborhoods in the uh, in the end of the game will score and they will score in the nature of orthogonally connected uh, areas the red the blue and the yellow areas now uh, in the opinions we'll get into that because it's an interesting way that it was approached so what do you do on your turn so you'll receive three cards from the player on your right and then draw one extra card uh, you will select a card and uh, paw and uh, so you select a card and possibly a tile from behind your screen and play them face down in front of you. And I'll explain that there's three options that you can choose there, potentially four. Uh, once everyone has secretly selected their action, all players will reveal their actions and then evaluate these choices from the from the start player and then going around to the left. So uh, you have three cards, and um, what I'll do is uh, we have the cards here. So you have three choices that you can do. You have exploitation, which depending on the card is the amount of resources on the tile. The player will receive either victory points, resources, or tiles. So if I was to play a three card, and this is the three, right now there's nothing on it and that represents one. So I would get one tile. If I would play the three red card, I would get one resource. Um, if there are more resources, it denotes more value to the cards, like, let's say, evaluation. Uh, then you have urbanization. Urbanization is when these letters come into effect. If I was to play an H, okay, I would uh, select a tile from behind my screen um, and uh, put it down in front of me and I would move the H because this is the only way growth can happen, orthogonally connected. Now, once a tile 
has been put here. If I was to develop an eye, then I could either move the eye this way or I could move it this way. And that's how this growth potential happens organically. Very clever. Oops, I'm letting it, I'm let, <laughs> a little bit of spoiler. Okay, um, uh, so that's the urbanization. And I'll get into how um, the details of executing these actions goes in, in later on. Um, and then the last one is constructing a floor. And that's where you get to build vertically. So you would select the card to which you're building a floor because all the cards that are in the draw pile represent the letters and then represent the tiles that are in play in this civilization. So I would play the card to which I would like to build. I could build in the same color. Okay, if I build in the same color, I'm not breaking any rules and I'm not having to pay a penalty. Um, if I build chronologically ascending order, I'm respecting all the rules and I'm not paying any penalties. If I was to build outside of that, I pay penalties. So I'll get to that later. Um, so moving on, um, the first player takes the card. Um, and uh, so at the, um, after the construction part, uh, we move on to basically what's called the, the um, cleanup. So if you are to, so at the end of that turn, the first player um, takes the first player card, puts it with his three cards, passes it to the left, then you rinse and repeat in this kind of check mark order. If you exhaust the draw pile and there are no cards to draw when you get to four, that is when you take the construct. So now if I was to have build a layer card or added a card or a tile to this new civilization, I would put one of these cool little construction markers. And um, I would put it on there to denote that when the draw pile's exhausted and you're to replenish the draw pile, you need to search for the cards that are new to this city building so that when you draw them, you are e either able to um, exploit for resources or build on top. Now, when you build on top, that's um, what I'd like to mention quickly kind of coming back to, when you build on top, that card has no function anymore except for its bonus action on the bottom, which you put in front of you as a tableau. We'll get to that later in the opinions. So how to score points and win. So you can obtain points through the bonus actions, as I just mentioned, available on the cards during gameplay. You would, first of all, execute, as I said, one of those three actions. Then you would look in your tableau to see if of those three actions, you have bonus actions that trigger. In those bonus actions, typically, you get either more resources, more points, or more tiles. There are, in the later tiles, um, and the game scoring conditions that you can put in front of your tableau, which is the next one. You obtain points from the end of game scoring cards in your tableau. Sometimes it'll say, for each blue card in your tableau, get a point. For each um, territory or tile that has one resource on it, get a point. Situations like that. So you, once you have these cards in your tableau, that kind of motivates your direction of how you're going to build your engine, build your asymmetry to gain victory points. And of course, the last one is the big one in this area, this area control aspect is when the game ends, you will look at all the orthogonally connected regions, the contiguous orthogonally connected regions. And let's say in this case, well, in this case, we have two, which is the minimum amount of tiles that you can have to have a region. In those two, if I was to have three and blue was to have two, if I, red was three and two, total of five, I have more, therefore I get the total value of resources in that region. Second player gets the amount of uh, resources that they have. Interesting, right? Fluctuating, organic, I like that. We'll get back to that whole idea of balance. Um, uh, let's see. And uh, that's basically the principal idea of how you gain points to win at the end of the game. Now, let's get into some opinions. All right, let's get to some opinions. I always like to start from the outside in, so let's start with the box. Here we go. Let's have a look. So, the box. I mean, 9 inches by about 12 inches by 3 inches deep. The art on the box, to me... Uh, reminds me of a, a movie poster kind of uh, uh, idea. So warm natural colors, you can see compelling characters, you have enough evidence in this picture to see that there's some civilization building going on, there's a relationship with nature, 
and the trees and the cranes, there's a harmony going on. So uh, I see a team-esque building of nature in balance. I get it. It works. It shows me enough to know what's uh, to expect inside. Let's move on to what's inside. So here we have um, your standard, uh, um, you know, Euro expectation. You have nice wooden components. You have some really good, thick, nice, thick, chunky tiles, right? Um, these tiles go in a bag. They're going to be bounced around. They need to be thick. It's not. It's it's a practical choice as well as a, an aesthetics and tactile choice too. Uh, the cards are great. Um, uh, I'm a big card fan, and the I hate the cards that cut like Home Depot lumber. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Um, and uh, so no, these cards are great. Um, there's uh, if you can hear it. There's a great, I call it a flick value. Now, again, there's probably a lot of collector card people that are just twitching right now. Good. No, I'm joking. Um, so, <coughs> pardon. Um, yeah, the resources um, are the wooden cubes, good chunky car uh, cardboard tiles, um, nice wooden components, nice cards. Uh, good job on the art and uh, uh, the connectivity with the components. So... Yay, I'm all happy about that. Rule book. Uh, let's have a quick look. The rule book is the size of the box, so um, good use on you know your, your uh, instructional uh, media. Uh, great separation and background foreground. The, uh, it's formatted nice. I like the, the, uh, the introduction of information boxes to help you go through a very kind of recipe-like um, stage to stage the explanations are clear there's examples um, there's a solitaire yay thank you um, and the solitaire is a good game it's very chaotic the the AI will just change things at a moment's notice and on the back they have and I, I like this um, I don't know if it's a, a method or a habit that's become um, you know hopefully expected that uh, there's a nice player aid on the back or there's a summary guide or there's something to help you get through the game if you're very familiar with the rules. So well done on that. Uh, moving on, after the rule book, let's talk about the game system. So the game starts uh, in a card drafting system. I'll always love a good card draft and it, because it gives you the feel of agency and control. And I'm not the type to do this one draft, but there is some hate drafting involved if you see the other player's needs from what you have. Uh, once these three cards come around, you draw another card to give you four of those four. You pick a card. Uh, you ha secretly, from behind your, um, your screen, select a tile or not select a tile, depending on the card's action, and I'll get to that. Uh, put it out in front of you. Once everyone has that done, you flip it over, reveal your action. In those actions, uh, you can do three things. You can... Uh, exploit, which means that I'm just going to take the card itself, which is either an urbanized area, which are the letters, or the card represents the tiles that are in play. If I choose, let's say, the three to exploit, I will exploit the resource identification on that tile, and as far as the number uh, represented on how many resources are on that tile, because it's going to grow. It'll be one level, two level, three levels, and there'll be those amount of resources to reflect that. Uh, so that's exploit. The urbanized action is I can play a card, which will be one of these letters. I take a tile from behind my board, and I can start expanding these regions by placing either H here. Now, when I urbanize and you develop a city, there's a beneficiary bonus of your neighbors. So orthogonally adjacent areas, you will receive um, uh, support in regards to what those resources bring and the amount that uh, is denoted on the, your neighbor's tile. If you're able to get into a corner, then you can access two. If you're able to get inside a little cul-de-sac, then you can benefit from three orthogonally connected edges in the urbanized action uh, potential. If you, now here's the, here's the, the I think the, the heart of the game is the building the construction. So if you choose to build a layer, um, which is I take one of these cards from my hand, place it down with a tile and play it on top. Now there's rules. Uh, you can, you must play of the same color and you must follow the chronological connection. Hi, I just bumped my camera. I'm so sorry. Very, uh, very me. 
Um, <laughs> and uh, so if you break either the rule of coming out of the color resource, it's going to cost resource. If you break the rule of not respecting the chronolog chronological ascending order, it will cost you the difference of the, uh, um, the number in regards to, you know, like if I have a 10 and I put a 5, that difference is 5 victory points. You have to be careful. Doesn't mean you can't do it, but there's strategic choices in order to break up areas, and that's the crazy part of this game that I, that I love. Uh, so once that happens and you play your cards, everybody evaluates their action. You um, basically at the end of that turn, first player takes first player card and the three players that the uh, three cards they didn't take pass to the left, play resumes. Um, does this all connect? I, I do I do think it all connects in regards to the idea that your city building, your um, uh, trying to, have a organically driven system with a mechanically uh, um, driven engine. And I, I think there's, there's some nice harmony. Um, the idea of creating urban, a team of urban planners is your tableau. So I think they did a good job for Euro to, to believably blend the theme with the, the mechanical nature of the, me the mechanisms in this game. Um, speaking of the mechanisms, I always like to talk about a unique mechanism because to me, that's what's going to hook me on a game is, is the uniqueness. Now, there's two things that I find unique in this game. And the one is the layering because you are able now to either uh, continue the growth of that area because at the end, the area control points are the big points that you get. Uh, an area is uh, evaluated by minimum of two tiles orthogonally collected, orthogonally, orthogonally connected very uh, articulate um, uh, as as far as the contiguous nature of this um, zone can go people might break that up right so as far as the scoring goes you count the amount of total resources that's the value of the winning um, uh, uh, reward the second player or the second place gets their amount of resources that they put into that area so the scoring is very organic and changes i like that what i also like is the extra time uh, tile pile depletion idea as one of the triggers is resources deplete game over another trigger is if the tile of uh, the pile of tiles depletes you stop the game everybody is able to from the first player going around the, uh, the table put back tiles into this um, general supply for one point per tile that can be a strategy of bonus points for the end of game if the game ends that way big risk so yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much how this game is, uh, is brought to life. My conclusion, um, there's three things that I'm gonna conclude with. One, this was one of my grail games. This was a game I thought I would never get in my collection. Yay, I have it in my collection. Two, Xavier George, one of my favorite designers. Um, I'm always, always, always going to explore what uh, uh, games come from uh, Xavier George. Now, the third one is a, uh, call it a warning. If you're the type of player that likes to plan long-term and expect results, this is not the game for you. <laughs> this is very much not a strategic, but a tactical to the point. I, I've made parallels uh, akin to five tribes that if you're the last player in the turn, don't even bother trying to trying to predict how the board's going to be when it comes to you're, you're selecting your action. Um, you have to understand that th the landscape and the control of the board could change dramatically by the time it gets to you. That's an expectation you have to have of this game. If that's a game that you like, awesome. For me, I love that nature of of trying to dance through the chaos. I love that. Uh, for me, this is a top shelf game. So uh, there you go. There are, is my show and tell, my uh, opinions and my conclusions um, about uh, Ginkopolis, designed by Xavier George and published by Pearl Games. Thank you so much. This has been an episode of Cardboard Conjecture Show and Tell, an overview and review of Ginkopolis in 15 minutes. Ginkopolis, designed by Xavier George and published by Pearl Games. Thank you.